Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ima. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Francesco, and I'm part of Project Toth, as uh, Ima mentioned. Uh, what we're going to do today is basically go through the tutorial that uh, is actually available on the Operate First environment. I guess you already heard about uh, Operate First in the past days. But what we're going to do today is basically walk through the steps that you're going to find in that tutorial. And just to give you a little bit of overview of what you're going to find, why there are some technologies and uh, services that uh, are used in the, each of the steps, and also to basically be familiarized with the, all the environment that we're going to use, I guess, for all your projects in the, in the next weeks. So let me start um, having an overview of what uh, technologies you're going to use. So probably you already uh, heard about Operate First, as I said. Uh, you know that there is an OpenShift uh, uh, environment running there. And on top of it, there is the uh, Open Data Hub, which is deployed and orchestrate the different uh, operator and projects that are present in uh, Open Data Hub. In the other technologies that you're going to use for this tutorial are Elira. So Elira is a, a Jupyter Lab extension that allows you to create uh, AI pipelines. It also lets you use uh, Python script in uh, JupyterLab directly, R script. So there are different extensions, also the Git extension. Uh, I guess you had the talk already uh, about Git in the, in the previous days. So there are some features that you can basically replicate on your Git um, features, but not all of them are available. So some of them will be uh, shown. Some of them are still uh, in work in progress for the extension. But uh, at least you are going to experience how all of these technologies are going to help you uh, being like basically more productive. Uh, most of them will automate uh, many of the things that you have to do. Some of them, uh, like uh, the bots and the pipelines that uh, Christoph mentioned, are going to basically release you from doing some mundane work like uh, update dependencies or um, release, create images. That is something that can be completely automated for you. So you can basically focus on your actual project. Um, then we will see also Argo CD. So I, if you heard, it's uh, basically GitOps. Uh, Argo CD is the upstream project. GitOps is uh, um, our downstream project for uh, uh, Red Hat. And basically, this project allows you to have a continuous deployment of uh, manifests. So if you have images and or your application can be automatically redeployed by, by the application. And then, of course, you have uh, monitoring. So you want to monitor your application, and we use uh, Prometheus and Grafana to visualize uh, everything in the dashboards. So let me go ahead, if this works. Um, so what uh, steps we're going to see? So the first step, of course, is to set up your initial environment. If you never tried Operate first, you will see that uh, it's quite uh, straightforward to get uh, uh, basically on board there. If you want to start, you just need a Gmail account, and you can get uh, your environment uh, set. And you will be able to basically log in and see uh, Open Data Hub and all the projects that are available. And you can use Jupyter Hub. And you, we are going we are going to see this uh, in the later uh, slides. The second steps or is more focused on the notebooks. So there are some good practices that uh, you might be aware or you might be not aware, but uh, that we would like you to uh, use in, in your projects because uh, we really care about uh, reproducibility and shareability, especially if you work in teams. Having the possibility to have uh, um, a common source of truth, which is always up to date and that others can use to deliver new features. You can also work on the same project working on two features, also for the data science project, and following some, uh, uh, let's say, guidelines or good best, pra best uh, practices, especially for the dependencies. This will basically help you and uh, all the others, especially if there are other people that want to repeat your experiments. Then in this way, everything is going to be easier, let's say. Then there are uh, these uh, push changes and create release and maintain dependencies. These two steps um, are basically the more automated ones. So you're going to see that this is done by the AI CE pipelines, which is, is going to be presented, I think, uh, tomorrow. And there is also the release and the bots that maintain the dependencies. This is this is something that you will also uh, have a presentation tomorrow by Frido and Ashar um, about this. 
Then we're going to move to the iPipeline itself. So the features that uh, are actually uh, in Elira and how to use Elira with uh, Tecton and Kubeflow. So this project that uh, I use in uh, uh, machine learning to develop uh, pipelines for continuous training uh, and uh, for ML project in general. And the last two steps are basically more for the ML engineer or the AI DevOps. So once you have your trained model, now you want to put it in production and have uh, uh, monitoring. You want to have tests, integration tests, in order to validate that the performances are still the same between the model that has been created by the data scientist and the one that is actually deployed. So all these kinds of things can be uh, actually, most of them automated. But we were going to see, and you are going to actually to experience it in the when you're going to try the tutorial. So let's say that, uh, let's start with the step uh, uh, of the environment. So I'm a data scientist and I want to start my AI project. So usually I would go on GitHub and create a new repo. So there would be all my sources, everything that uh, I want to have for my project is there. So everything can be reproducible. Everyone can have a look at what is happening. And what I would like to have is, uh, let's say a common structure or a template maybe that uh, would allow others to easily find everything. And this is something that uh, has been introduced by the AI Ops team. So AI Ops team introduced a uh, uh, GitHub template, is based on cookie cutter template, but uh, is uh, basically enhanced with uh, some of the services that are created in the ISOE, like the pipelines, like uh, Tot. And this kind of uh, tools basically would help you and others to immediately find uh, whatever you need in the project. So if I need to work in a project that, uh, for example, Hima is working on, and they want to see where, where are the notebooks or where are the models, then I can immediately find something there. So in this way, everyone has a common structure and you can uh, facilitate the others to uh, discover what you're doing. And also if they want to contribute for your projects, they immediately know where to work on. And I think Michael might be, in the next uh, yes talk, is going to talk about the data science workflows, and I'm sure he's going to mention also the project templates. So now I have my project template. So now I want to, to have an environment to start to work on, and uh, I have, uh, for example, Operate first, which is uh, uh, an open environment that I can use to develop my AI projects, which has OpenShift and which has uh, Open Data Hub. So if you go through the UI from Open Data Hub and on Operate First, you will see that there are different projects. These are deployed by the uh, Open Data Hub operator, and uh, all of them are basically available for you in the Operate First environment. So you can use each of them for your projects. But what we're, what we're going to focus today is, uh, as we are starting a project, what we want to, to do is uh, to use Jupyter Hub. So Jupyter Hub will give us uh, the possibility to choose some images. So these images um, have different dependencies, can be used uh, depending if you need, I don't know, TensorFlow or PyTorch. You might have different environment that has been created. And, or maybe you want to have experiments because uh, all the project that you finish and are available on your GitHub repo, then they can become also an experiment, which is basically available on the JupyterHub environment. So if you have a project that you finish and you want to share with everyone, so everyone can replicate or just try your project, then they can use uh, that image, which uh, can be spawned easily by JupyterHub. And what I mean is if you didn't try, basically when you open JupyterHub, you are gonna have this UI and you can select uh, the notebook image. For example, in this case, there is the Elira, which is what we're going to use for the tutorial, but you can have also other images. And you will see that there are also experiment or some other project that uh, other team are contributing and working on. So if you want to have a look, you can also see other experiments. And then you can set basically the size of your container, the number if you need GPU, and the environment variable for your project. So let's say that I choose my image. So now I have my environment uh, set. So I have uh, JupyterLab. I have a Lyra extension on this image, and I have the Git extension. So all of them are going to be used in the tutorial. And this is what will look like when you open, uh, uh, for example, the Jupyter image with the Elira. You will see that uh, there are some specific uh, enhancements for the Jupyter Lab, which is given by the Elira extension, like the pipeline editor, the Python file. There will be also, I think, in the new version, there is also the R file. So there are other um, 
extension that have been added. And there is also one plugin for the Git extension, which we're going to see later. All of this, uh, maybe I didn't mention or someone already mentioned, there is also a YouTube channel on uh, Operate First. And there is some Expresso series and different videos that you can find uh, that uh, Michael, uh, Isabel, Christoph, everyone is start to contribute uh, to basically allow the others to speed up and immediately learn how to use the tools and everything that we have. So I put below the slide, so when you will get this deck, you can check all the sources below the, the pages and uh, you will also find actually videos explaining uh, all the things that we are talking about now, more into details. So let me go ahead. So now we move to the uh, reproducibility part and the notebooks. So now I have my environment set. And what I want to do first is to make sure that uh, everything I change in my source of truth, in this case, which is my GitHub repo, then is uh, cloned in my environment. So what I use is the Git extension immediately. And uh, you will see that it's quite straightforward. There is a button in the JupyterLab Im image and uh, you can basically enter your uh, URI from your uh, repo. And that gives you basically the environment in your uh, in JupyterHub. And now that I have also my project, I can start basically, oops, sorry, I can start working on a notebook. So I have, let's say, the tutorial is based on the NIST uh, classification. So it's a very trivial or the hello world uh, example. But uh, the purpose of this tutorial is to basically give you um, an idea of the tools and everything that you can use and also the services that you can rely on in order to speed up your process and uh, your work. And so we, says, we decided to start with a very simple uh, uh, tutorial also because when we use it uh, also for workshop, it's something that uh, is pretty fast and uh, everyone can get all the pieces in time. So let's start with, with the notebooks. Um, and one thing that I mentioned at the beginning is the reproducibility and the dependencies are basically key if you want to uh, replicate your environment and you want to allow others to replicate your environment. And this is our, these are some practices which uh, basically we do not suggest because in this way you are practically saying that you don't want uh, others to reproduce your work. Because if you say pip install TensorFlow today, in one week you might get uh, another version of TensorFlow. And even if you say, let me say TensorFlow 2.4, TensorFlow is just a direct dependency, but uh, on the dependency tree, TensorFlow depends on other dependencies, which might change also. So there is a, a series of um, dependencies that needs to be stated uh, clearly in order to allow others to, to basically replicate the work. And this is one example that uh, cannot be, uh, should not be used. The other one is uh, to have just uh, the list of packages because uh, as you can imagine, this is the same example and the other. You are not saying anything about your dependencies. You're not saying anything about uh, ashes. We cannot talk about uh, security and other things. So this is a very important uh, thing. And uh, you don't need to worry about that actually because uh, we introduced uh, an extension on JupyterLab. So most of the images on uh, JupyterHub uh, and all the uh, open data hub images should have this uh, extension uh, already present. So we have an extension which is called uh, JupyterLab requirements and allows you to manage the dependency easily. So instead of you going and check what is happening, what dependency should I use or whatever uh, is related to dependencies, you actually let a service doing that for you. And actually in the background, what is running is a uh, thought. So thought is the recommender system for software stacks and you will get basically your uh, environment and your dependencies directly in your notebook because this is going to be stored actually in the notebook metadata. So if you go through the notebook metadata, you will see that uh, there is actually um, everything stored there. Also the resolution engine that was used, uh, everything that is important for others to replicate your environment. So they need to have that together with your notebook. The notebook itself without uh, the dependencies might be uh, not useless, but uh, might break quite easily because uh, you don't know what uh, environment you need to use. And also for this, there is a video on uh, on the Expresso series, which uh, explain everything related to that. There is also a demo on uh, how that works and how you can use it. Uh, this is just another example of that. Um, let me go ahead. 
Yeah, so now we have uh, our notebook. We know how to handle the dependencies. We can start uh, creating some of the steps. For example, I want to download my data set and start processing it. Then I want to create, uh, for example, other notebooks for the training, uh, for explore, uh, exploratory data analysis or other tasks that I want to have. I can have also Python script, which are provided by the Lara extension. I can have also R script, I think, today also. So all these pieces can be created quite easily. Just uh, if you think just having that environment that uh, you can get easily from uh, uh, Open Data Hub, and then you can do all these things. But uh, let's go one step ahead. Um, as we said, we want the, uh, to allow reproducibility and everyone to be able to contribute to your work or replicate your experiment. So at the end of the day, let's say when you finish working on your on your project. You want always to push everything on uh, on GitHub, so you can do that uh, also easily using that extension. And this allow basically for shareability and uh, traceability of everything that happened. And now uh, let's say that uh, we arrive at some point where we have uh, all of the notebooks, and you will see in the tutorial that there are the notebooks that are created there, and uh, you're now happy to basically create a release out of it. So you want to freeze this moment in time to know that this is a preliminary version would that work for me. So let's let's create a release out of it. And so what we can do, uh, this is one of the tasks that I mentioned that can be automated for you. So you don't need to worry on creating release uh, or images and pushing them to some registry because this can be totally automated with the services that are available today. And this is something that is provided basically the, by the AI SOE pipeline. Oh, sorry. Um, how the AI SOE pipeline knows where to push, what to push, what environment to use, and all this kind of information will be stated in the AI SOE YAML file. And the use of the template, as I mentioned, is something that uh, you will already find that in your project. So you just need to adapt it uh, on your need. So if you want to push those to some specific registry, if you want to build the image or also there is the possibility to deploy. But in this case, uh, everything will be basically handled by the pipeline itself. And for that, you are gonna have a, a very detailed uh, explanation, I think, from uh, uh, another presentation in the next days. So specifically on the pipelines that are available and what you can do with it. But in the, to in the tutorial as well, you're gonna have a section which is basically explaining how to set that, how to rely on the pipelines and Everything is linked in the in the slide in any case. So together with the pipelines, you can actually have the bot working itself with the together with the pipelines. And this will make uh, things uh, even easier for you because uh, what you can do when you're ready to release, you're gonna basically, um, sorry, create an issue on GitHub. So I say, I want a new minor release, a new patch release, a new major release, and then the bot will do everything for you. So using the ISOE pipelines, all the configuration that uh, are present, together with the bot, everything will be automated for you. And uh, once the bot is ready, we'll, it's gonna create a release and a change log. So whatever you change in your project is gonna be stated and it's gonna be available in the, in the project. And then uh, the pipeline will start and creating an image. As I said, you can also have uh, overlays. I will not go into details of this, but uh, for each of the, uh, when you create a pipeline, you might have different steps in the pipeline, as I mentioned before, and each of them might have different environments. So imagine that uh, in the first one you want pandas, and in the second one you want TensorFlow and other libraries. These two environments might be quite different depending on what you are trying to achieve. For example, in the training, you are interested in performance, so you want to know what is the most performant software stack for that. In the um, in the deployment, for example, image, you are interested in security. So you want to add for that specific software stack. And this kind of actually recommendation are always given by uh, the same service, which is thought. So all these kind of things will be available for you immediately uh, when you start this project and you rely on these uh, services. This is the pipeline uh, using Tecton pipelines. The ISOE will create the image for you that it will be uh, as I said, more detailed explanation on this, but uh, trust uh, that the uh, work is working and we are using it uh, a lot in uh, in the SOE. 
And at the end, you will get basically your image uh, on your registry. So once the image is there, you will find that there is a new tag for your image. This is uh, something that can be created uh, after um, uh, each release that you create. So then you can use these images in your projects. Let's go one step ahead. So um, let's say that this project is uh, on GitHub and uh, there are some, imagine that there is a new CVE for your, for your dependency. So you're using uh, a certain version of TensorFlow and at some point in time, there is a new CVE coming for it. So you want to know that there is a, a security issue for your dependencies and actually you want to, of course, update the dependencies. And in this case, you don't need to worry about that because uh, as, far, as soon as you have uh, Kebeshet installed on your project, this is something that uh, you can get uh, basically for free. You don't need to do anything about that. That is something that the bot will do for you. So either when there is a new release of a package, so there is new version of TensorFlow that you might want to consider maybe for your project, then the bot uh, will open uh, a pull request and update the dependency for you. Same is there is a CV. This will be done by the bot itself. And uh, basically, you don't have to worry about that. This is an example of what the bot do for you. So it will open a pull request saying that uh, there is a new version for uh, some specific versions, and it's going to update um, your software stack in the in your project repo. So everything is traced, and you can see immediately the changes that have been made. Now we move uh, to the pipeline itself. So we know how to create uh, notebooks, how to handle dependencies, how to create images out of it. Now we want to use these images directly into an AI pipeline. So as I said, the Lyra allows you as an extension of JupyterLab, and there's also an integration with to create these AI pipelines, which uh, rely on Kubeflow. Kubeflow is backed by different types of uh, actually uh, projects, can be Tekton, can be Argo, can be Airflow. Uh, currently, we are using uh, Tekton on Operate First. So whenever you run your pipeline, Kubeflow is going to uh, rely on Tekton to schedule this, uh, this task. And so what we are going to do is basically take uh, all the pieces that we created, we put them together in a pipeline, and then we can easily run it. And in the next days, I think uh, there will be Andrila also presenting um, together with the Shrey, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, in the next days, you're going to see some more complex example on how to use these pipelines. What we're going to show today is, and in the tutorial is that you can use this uh, easily. You can create, uh, you saw there is an UI, an interface to do that. So you can put your two steps together. You can put a description of them. And then uh, after creating all the runtime and everything that is needed to run that. This is something that you will see and uh, you will learn about in the tutorial or when following the presentation from Mandrilla, you're gonna see how to run these pipelines and how to debug them, how to see what happened. And uh, basically you're gonna learn uh, the Elira pipelines itself. For each of the pipeline, as I said, you need to set the images. So we created those images. You can create images for each of the step that you have this is going to be basically the use of the overlays and then you can assign all of them to the different steps and then you can write this pipeline this is an example of the ui from kubeflow and you can see uh, the steps that are running and the status of them and uh, how to see if there are errors or not but you can also do something very more complex that is something that uh, uh, we were working with uh, sanjay and uh, this is something that you can do also on Kubeflow. You can do very complex uh, pipelines. Uh, and I mean, that's up to you with your projects. This is something that you will use, uh, I guess. This tutorial is just to give you a basis on uh, the tools and the environment that you can use. Let's move to the last two parts. Um, I hope I'm, I am on time, I guess. And if you have any question, we can go through some question if you have. I think I don't have much time left, probably. But, oh no, I still have time. Do you have uh, any questions or I can move uh, ahead? I guess uh, not. I cannot check the... Um, the chat. 
Okay, thanks, Ima. Then uh, if there are no questions, I will go ahead and proceed to the next uh, steps. So now that we have uh, uh, our training pipeline using Elira, you have uh, your model and you know how to store it on Git. So you can always trace back what is happening. You know how to create images. So you know how to uh, reproduce everything and you can always get uh, these uh, container images. Then you want to actually deploy the model. So now you have your model and now you need to work with uh, an ML engineer or someone that is uh, uh, expert in deploying uh, these images or these models. So we will work together to, uh, or he will work on deploying this model on a specific uh, environment. There are several types of deployments. Um, in the tutorial, we're gonna use basically a Flask application. It's a very basic one, but uh, there are new or other technologies that you can use like KF Serving, Seldon, which is the one available on Rhodes. There is TensorRT. So there are different types of deployments and each of them requires different type of manifest, different type of um, uh, pipeline. Let's say if you want to create some automation out of it, so this is something that uh, can be uh, also automated actually, and it's something that we will talk later. But uh, this is a step that uh, you need to do if you want to deploy, either you use any of them. But for the tutorial, you'll see that uh, there is a Flask application um, that is created, it's a very simple one. And um, yeah, let's go ahead. So yeah, you will see that there are tasks to create the Flask application. Uh, the image, you know how to do that. There are also manifests. I guess you had a presentation on OpenShift or some objects uh, related to Kubernetes. So there are some manifests that you can use if you want to have some uh, simple deployments like the deployment config. Uh, and then if you want to expose your endpoints, you need to create also service and routes. This is something that you can use in the, um, um, in the deployment part of the tutorial. But there is also uh, there are the part related to Argo CD. So we didn't talk about it, but uh, basically all the deployment can be automated. There is a link to onboard on uh, deployment on Operate First if you want to basically reuse continuous deployment uh, every time you change your image or your version of or tag of your project. You can basically let the automation and Argo CD do everything for you. So it's going to redeploy everything, and your model will be continuously redeploy, continuously monitor, and it will be completely automated. So in the tutorial, you will find uh, both. So either you want to learn how to deploy that or you want to use uh, Argo CD, then there is the onboarding on uh, Operate first. You can open an issue and uh, the team will help you on that. So now we basically know how to do this. So you will get to know or you will experience how to use that how the application is created. And this is the UI from uh, Argo CD. Uh, so you will see that your application is actually always deployed, that is always synced, uh, um, it's healthy or not. Uh, and uh, if there is some issues, you can always uh, ask for support. But uh, in general, this tool has, is gonna help you basically automate all this process. You don't need to worry about that. You just need to focus on uh, improving your model and uh, adding new data, whatever you want to do for your project, but the rest can be completely automated for you. And so you will see that uh, all different pieces uh, allows you to basically focus, as I said, in the model deployment. Um, this is um, the ICOE YAML as well. So the ICOE uh, CI can also update uh, uh, during the deployment. So it can uh, basically update the manifest and the version of your tag automatically. So you can rely on the ICOE CI uh, as well for that. You just need to add the deploy key in your um, ICOE YAML file. But that is something that you will see and you will learn uh, in the next uh, uh, talks. And of course, there is a monitoring. So whenever you create your application, if you cannot observe it, basically, we can say that uh, you cannot do anything about it or that's completely uh, un unusable or and in this way you need to have a way to observe and see what is happening on your system if you need to improve it if you want to know that there is data drift if you want to allow the system to uh, trigger basically for example continuous training again when there is a data drift and uh, other automation then you need to observe the system some way and this is easily 
uh, done using the technology that we have in uh, in uh, ODH and uh, operate first. So you have uh, Prometheus and Grafana, and you can also set alarms for them. Um, that's uh, it. Model evaluation. This is the last uh, task, I think. And uh, this is something also very important. So when you have uh, your model, you also need to gather metrics. You also want to uh, test it. If uh, your latency is good, if your average errors is good, if the performance are still the same, if the system is using too much memory, too much CPU, we need to adapt. All this kind of information are important for the ML engineer and also for the data scientists to know if the system uh, needs to be improved somehow. So this is all part of the metrics that you want to know. And uh, for that, for example, you can use, uh, to get these metrics, you can use some uh, tests. In the tutorial, you will find that there is um, a behave test. So behave is a Python library that uh, use uh, this Gerklin, Gerklin language. So basically you can state in natural language, uh, what is the, you want to have in your feature. So in this case, what I want to do is, uh, I have my data set available. I have my deployment accessible somewhere. Then I want to run this test and I want to receive these metrics. So this is the structure from one side. On the other side, basically each of these line, or let's say the, the one below the scenario will be uh, basically the Python scripts. So you can, in, you can use some logic out of this uh, and the behave library allows you to do this test quite easily. So you can, uh, work together with the, maybe the data scientist to decide what is that you want to have, you want to see, and then you can create these tests quite easily. Um, feedback. So um, this is a slide for the MLOps. So as we showed before, you have your maybe training pipeline and every time there is a new ML model, then you want to store it, you want to create an image out of it, you want to test it, as we said, to verify that everything is uh, still giving the good performances in terms of uh, uh, everything that we talked to, uh, before, and then you want to push it to your registry. So now you have your new model, and then you can basically use the continuous deployment for that. This is something that is completely automated for you. As I said, you have these pipelines and you have Argo CD, so everything will be automated for you. At the end, uh, everything will be synced and you will have your new model deployed. The monitor will still be in place so you can still monitor your, your model if there is some data drift, then you retrain the model and so on and so on. So what we can do about it? Um, in Project Thought, we thought, and we want to introduce actually a new pipeline that uh, can help um, basically boost or uh, uh, make the process faster. So let's say that uh, you have your project and your model is created. Then uh, if there is a new update in the dependency, then uh, you need to create another image, you need to redeploy it and learn out of it before going into the production. If there is a new model, you want to do this as well. And uh, if there is a change in the data, then you want again to do the training and create a new model. All these different scenarios, can be basically uh, backed by pipelines that can give you feedback immediately. So let's say that I open a pull request to change my model, then I can basically use a pipeline and uh, some bots that uh, could tell me immediately, this is the model that you want to deploy, this is the version, and these are all the metrics that uh, you, you, you want to know. So reusing most of the logic which is present already, uh, there is this new pipeline, and this is something that we will talk uh, today uh, in another talk. But what you will get is basically a report out of it. So you just open a pull request with uh, your new model or changing something in your application, then every, everything will be run on the back for your pipeline, with your pipeline, and uh, the model will be built in an image, and then uh, you will get basically deployment, and some tests will be run out of it. And all of this will be uh, provided to you immediately. So you can see that the model is still behaving correctly, that uh, not only from the ML point of view, but also from the application metrics, from the platform metrics, maybe we need to improve the CPU because uh, the system is not going so fast, or we need to change something in the memory because it cannot handle some of the, some of the load. So all this kind of information can be feedback basically immediately to the, 
to the users, which are the ML engineer and data scientists in this case. So to summarize, and I think these are the last slides. So this is basically the schema of what we look today. You see that there are basically all these different uh, uh, iteration that uh, can be done. This is maybe a better perspective. So you work on your model and on your machine learning model. You can always use these pipelines, which maybe are used for Elira. So you have this continuous pipeline that you can use for your training. And everything will be always stored on the GitHub, which is uh, your source of truth. Then you can rely on the pipeline to create the images. You can rely on the bot to, re rely to keep the dependency up to date. And you can rely on Argo CD and uh, all this tooling to basically automate out of it. So if you think at the end, when everything is set for your project, what you need, really need to focus on is just uh, your application. So if you want to change features, if you want to change something, once everything is set, you can focus on uh, your project and everything, all the rest will be automated. And this is uh, basically our target. So at the end of the presentation, you will find uh, the tutorial itself. There is a link, uh, the link to Expresso series. So if you want to have a look at the videos and below each of the slides, I always try to put a source. So if you want to have a look at uh, a specific thing related to that topic, you can find the source there. And on the YouTube channel, there is also the one for Tot, where you will see also what everything we do. And if you want to know more about the recommender system or all the pipelines, everything that we build, then you're free to go. And uh, if you have questions, just come to our channel. Thank you very much. If you have any question, I'm happy to answer. If not, I'm also happy to leave you go. Um, Francisco, if you have a few more minutes, I think we do have a couple of more minutes, but do you just want to yeah. like quickly show them the where they can find the tutorial or just give them like some information of how um, yes, they we can, get started? We can go through it. Thank you, Ima. So if you can see my screen, I guess. Um, Let's go to the Operate First. So on the Operate First uh, website, you can see basically, um, I mean, there are different, uh, a lot of information that you can find about the projects and everything. But if you go to users, there are different, uh, um, let's say, tabs and support for the different uh, uh, tools that are available. If you go to Jupyter Hub, you will find the tutorial itself. We together with other examples. Here you have basically all the things we talk in this uh, uh, today, and uh, you will see the environment that we use, everything related to the dependencies, to the projects, the logic and the reason behind this tutorial, and all of the steps that we mentioned today. So everything that you want to have a look, and uh, you, it's already available there. Uh, Operate first is open, so you can just go there. Uh, create your account and work on it. And if you're interested in the project, the Elira tutorial is uh, available on the AI SOE organization, sorry. And as well here, you find uh, everything related basically that you saw before. So if you have issue or if you encounter problems, uh, feel free to open issues and we will try to uh, help you always if you need uh, that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Francesco. Does anyone have any questions for Francesco? I know it's a lot of things. <laughs> But everything will be explained into details, I think, in the next uh, day also. So, and you can always try the tutorial and see, and you will get used to it, I think. Yes, and like Francesco mentioned, um, in the Operate First environment, we have Jupyter Hub already um, available. So all you need to do is just log in with your Gmail account. And I think you can follow through um, the tutorial that Francesco has created. So 
uh, it should be fairly easy enough for you guys. But if you do have any problems, uh, we do have an operate first GitHub repository. I'm sure all of you were aware of that from yesterday's sessions. So we encourage you to raise any um, issues you may have over there or even join us on our Slack channel. Um, most of you should already be on there on the Slack channel. If not, please let us know and we can get you guys um, added on to that. All right, um, if we don't have any questions, we can end a little earlier. Anthony, John, yes, sure. Um, I will add all of you to our Slack channel once we get off the call. Surya, yes, will do. I will make sure to add all of you guys. OK. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have one last session later in the afternoon uh, by Michael, who's going to give you guys um, a quick overview of data science workflows. So I will see you all back there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hima. Thank you all, and enjoy the bootcamp.